I mean, this, I guess, brings us on to, you know, we, we've talked a lot about how to optimize and increase the amount of recycling going on, but obviously there's a sort of parallel discussion about how popular the second life of a battery will be, which is obviously you know, taking away some material from the recycling chain. Uh, what, what do you think about the sort of second use argument and how does that you know, really affect, I guess, your, your business and the broader uh, recycling chain? I think if you look even just four or five years ago, there really <clears throat> was a single type of cell made and then was put in either electric vehicle or stationary storage applications. But more recently, we really have bifurcated the types of cells being made, not just the chemistry, but the cell construction itself, really just because the load profiles are quite different between vehicle or stationary applications. So even things such as, you know, coded electrode thicknesses on current collectors, different types of electrolyte, electrolyte additives for different cells really allow now for brand new cells and systems designed for stationary applications to actually be lower cost and higher performance than trying to repurpose a cell that was designed for the vehicle application, but is now at its end of life. So I, I think there used to be a case for this. I think it's diminishing really as the attractiveness and performance of systems specifically targeted to be stationary systems has improved quite a bit over the past few years. And I think that really lends itself towards when a, a vehicle cell is at the end of a vehicle life uh, to really be recycled over to be reused. And especially as the cost effectiveness and the environmental impact of these recycling systems continues to improve, it actually can be much lower environmental footprint to recycle it early and get those materials back into the electric vehicle market rather than have it go to the secondary system and, and defer that recycling. Interesting, so a little bit more sort of, I guess in layman's terms, taking the pain now and recycling it um, and avoiding sort of a, a sort of half fulfilled second life. Interesting. Um, there were, there was one other quite specific question that's just come through uh, now for Ryan, which is um, talking about your demanufacturing process and how would that work with multiple types of battery packs, cells and multiple chemistries? How specific is the demanufacturing technology to auto OEM battery form factors slash battery designs? It is relatively form factor agnostic. So we have tested it with you know, cylindrical based modules with pouch and prismatic of many different sizes and form factors. Because it really is just the first two steps of the process that handle these types of components. A lot of the advantages come once you have the sub cell components. And once you go sub cell, it's very similar, no matter what the initial form factor was, really how we're able to separate the coded materials off of the substrates, separate different substrates from each other really treat different contaminants and constituents within the liquid phase that comes from the electrolyte and loosely held materials and electrode structures. All of that is the same, independent of what the initial form factor entering the system was. Okay. So in that case, it's pretty form factor agnostic, as you said. So, brilliant. Yes. 